Primary 6 Listening Comprehension Practice Listening Comprehension Practice for Primary 6 Instructions to Teachers Before you begin this practice listening exercise, please check that the volume of the speaker is audible to all your students. Adjust the volume of the speaker to ensure that all your students are comfortable with the level of volume. Instructions to Students In this practice listening exercise, you'll hear seven passages in total. You will hear each passage twice. In the question paper, you'll see the questions and three options for each question. Only one of the three options is the correct or the best answer. Choose the option which you think is the correct or best answer. Then put a tick in the box next to the option you have chosen as your answer. You will now hear 15 seconds of music before the exercise begins. Listen to passage 1, then answer questions 1 and 2. Miss Tan, I need to speak with you for a moment. Are you in a hurry? No, I'm not in a hurry. We can certainly talk. Thank you. It's about the school outing next week. My students are so excited and they want to have some information quickly to inform their parents. Oh, the outing! I am in fact going to prepare an information sheet with all the details. But if your students must have the information earlier, we can give it to them. What would they like to know, Mr. Raja? First, they want to know if they have to pay, and if yes, how much? The transport cost per student is $4 which the school will pay. The entrance ticket for each student is $1 which we will collect from the students. The packet mail for each student will cost $2, but each student will only pay $1. So, the total cost for each student is $7, but each of them will pay only $2. That's great! Beside the consent form, do you need to fill in any other form? Yes, students will have to hand in to their form teachers the consent form, the health declaration form, and the payment form. They can hand in the payment form on the day of the outing, but the other two forms must be handed by the end of this week. Great! Thank you, Ms. Tan. I'll inform my students today. You're welcome, Mr. Raja. Question 1. What is the total amount each student needs to pay? Question 2. Which of these forms can be handed in last? Listen to passage 2, then answer questions 3 and 4. My mother took me to the Pasar shopping mall near my house last Sunday. It was crowded. Before going to the mall, we went to a food court known as Sadab Food Court, which was to the left of the mall. We had a nice breakfast there. On the left of the food court was a restaurant known as Coffee and Tea Mart, where they sell only local food such as prata, nasi lemak, and fried kway teow with coffee or tea, of course. I had roti john with milo, and my mother had fried carrot cake with coffee. After breakfast, we went into the supermarket in the mall to shop for groceries. 
On the way out, we stopped by Coffee and Tea Mart to buy nasi lemak for my father and fried kway teow for my brother. Question 3 Which picture shows the three buildings as described in the recording? Question 4. Where did the writer and her mother go after breakfast? Listen to passage 3, then answer questions 5 and 6. One evening, Selina and her two brothers were at a playground near their house. Selina went straight to the swing and started playing on the swing. Andy, her elder brother, was on the stationary bicycle exercising. Her younger brother, John, was playing on the slide. After about 20 minutes, Selina was seen on a seesaw with John. Andy was still on the bicycle. In another 30 minutes, John was enjoying himself on the swing while Selina was near the bicycle watching Andy. Andy got off the bicycle and helped Selina get on to it. After about 5 minutes, Selina got tired of the bicycle and got down and went back to her favourite swing. All this while, John had left the seesaw and was at the merry-go-round. Andy looked at his watch. It was six o'clock. He told his brother and sister that it was time to go home and they left for home only after playing on the merry-go-round for about five minutes. Question 5. Selena's first stop was at location? Question 6. When Selena went back to the swing a second time, John was at the... Listen to passage 4, then answer questions 7 and 8. In Japan, soft bread was used to erase mistakes on paper. The Japanese had figured out then that the best material to erase mistakes was soft bread. Yes, bread. Students there have been known to like this solution since they could always tear a part of the bread they had with them for their meals to erase their mistakes. An engineer in England, Edward Nine, used breadcrumbs as eraser too. But one day in 1770, he unknowingly picked up a piece of rubber instead of bread. And the rubber erased everything away. Edward was amazed at his discovery. Centuries ago, contests for inventors were held. Edward IX entered the eraser-making contest. He designed his rubber eraser in such a way that those using it can hold it easily to erase pencil markings on paper and entered the contest. The rubber eraser became a great success. Its use spread widely. Edward's rubber eraser had its flaws, and there were quite a few of them. The eraser, when used, tend to crumble 
and would not last long. It was sensitive to weather conditions as well. In hot weather, the rubber eraser would melt and the smell it gave off was bad. In 1839, a man named Charles Goodyear solved this problem. He made the rubber more durable with a method called vulcanization. With that improvement, the rubber became a popular household item. Question 7. Based on the recording, which of the following is correct? Question 8. What were the flaws with the rubber eraser? Listen to passage 5, then answer questions 9, 10, 11, and 12. Good morning, Mr. Shah. Thank you for coming to our school. I am Miss Amy, your son's form teacher. Nice to meet you, Miss Amy. I find Daniel to be a well-behaved student. He is hardworking and hands in his work on time. He has even been commended for good deeds by the principal and the discipline master. Thank you, Miss Amy. Daniel is a good boy and is helpful in the course. He is quite independent. He irons his own uniforms and washes and dries his own shoes. I see, that is good. He is also active in sports. He seems to like many outdoor games. He is a very skillful football player and I have seen him play basketball and badminton as well. He told me his dream is to represent his country in athletics. I encourage that, but I told him that he has to do well in his studies too. Yes, he does show a lot of interest in sports and wants to do well in his studies. He will have his dinner only after finishing all his homework, so he's always eating late at night. It's good to have his homework done, but he must eat when he's hungry. I will speak to him about that. Thank you, Miss Amy. I'm sure he will listen to you. One more important thing. Daniel is a little weak in English grammar. He has to know the grammar rules. He needs to widen his vocabulary as well. Please see that he reads books regularly. I have told all my students to read at least one book per month. That will help enhance their knowledge of grammar and widen their vocabulary. Sure, Miss Amy. He does revise his work. I will see to it that he reads every day. That's good, Mr. Shah. This is my mobile number. Please do call me when you need to speak to me about Daniel. Thank you, Miss Amy. Thank you, Mr. Shah. We will meet again soon. Question 9. The dialogue you have heard was between... Question 10. Based on what you have heard, Daniel is said to be... Question 11. What is Daniel's ambition? Question 12. Based on the recording, what should Daniel do to become better in English?
Listen to passage 6. Then answer questions 13, 14, 15 and 16. Good morning, teacher and friends. I will now read out a story. A monkey lived on a mango tree next to a river. A crocodile came to rest under it, having swum a long distance. Seeing the crocodile tired and hungry, the kind monkey offered it mangoes. The crocodile thanked the monkey and ate the sweet mangoes. The next day, the monkey saw the crocodile again and happily shared the mangoes. After several days, the crocodile thought, If the mangoes are so sweet, I wonder how sweet the monkey's heart would be, given that he eats these mangoes every day. He thought of a wicked plan to trick the monkey to bring him to the middle of the river where he cannot escape and kill him for his heart. The crocodile came to the tree, saw the monkey and greeted him. Hello, my friend. I love your sweet mangoes. Would you please accept my invitation for dinner in my house? The unsuspecting monkey readily agrees. The monkey hops on to the crocodile's back, which swam towards his house. In the middle of the river, the crocodile suddenly blurted out the real reason for the invitation. The monkey was shocked but did not panic. He thought quickly and said, Oh, why didn't you say so earlier? I'm more than happy to give my heart to you, but I usually keep it hidden safely at the mango tree. We will have to go back and get it if you want to have my heart. The foolish crocodile said, Oh, fine. Let's go back and get it then. As soon as they reached the river bank, the monkey jumped onto the tree and climbed to the tallest branch away from the crocodile's grasp. How can I keep my heart outside my body? Go back, you foolish crocodile, and do not come back here ever. You are the worst friend I have ever had, said the monkey. Disappointed and embarrassed at how foolish he was, the crocodile swam back home, never to be seen again. Question 13. Why was the monkey kind? Question 14. After several days, the crocodile thought of an evil plan to... Question 15. The word that tells us the monkey trusted the crocodile is... Question 16. Which one of the following titles is the most appropriate for this story? Listen to passage 7. Then answer questions 17, 18, 19 and 20. A farmer wanted to work in the palace. One day, he happened to see the king's teacher in his village. The farmer told him about his ambition. The teacher said, All right, come to the city and meet me. The next day, the farmer was at the teacher's house 
well before sunrise. He knocked on the door and the teacher appeared. The farmer explained to him all that had happened. The teacher said, Off you go, I don't know you. Feeling disappointed, the farmer sat by a river when he saw the teacher walking towards the river for his bath. As soon as he was in the water, the farmer hid his clothes in the bushes. Oh, I'm feeling really cold. Who took my clothes? The teacher was murmuring to himself as he came out of the river. I did, replied the farmer. Oh, you, give me back my clothes, demanded the teacher. Apologize first, you owe me a favor, the farmer said with a smirk on his face. Feeling very cold, the teacher had to agree. Once he put on his clothes, the farmer said, You must carry me on your shoulders and walk through the streets. The teacher was furious, but he had to do it as agreed. When they walked past the palace, the king was shocked at what he saw. The king told his guards to bring the teacher to the palace at once and to punish the man on his teacher's shoulders. The farmer suddenly got down and said, I'm so sorry, sir. I shouldn't have done that to a learned man like you. I will carry you on my shoulders instead. The farmer quickly carried the teacher on his shoulders and started to walk. The guards approached them and shouted, Stop at once, you both! The new guards, not knowing the man on the farmer's shoulders was the king's teacher, beat him up soundly with the teacher crying out in pain. The farmer watched all that with much amusement. In the palace, the king asked the farmer, Who are you? The farmer narrated all that had happened. The king was amused with the farmer. He praised him for his honesty and wit and appointed him as his advisor in his palace. Question 17 The farmer's ambition was to Question 18. What made the farmer disappointed? Question 19. Which of the following is the correct order of events? Question 20. Which of the following is correct? 